Samsung's latest series smartphones are here, and today I'll be talking about the Samsung Galaxy A35. Let's check out the more affordable Galaxy A35. I have been using this phone for about a week now, and I think it's easily one of the best mid-range camera phones. Other than that you also getting one of the most good-looking designs for the price. It does look very similar to last year's A34, but this time the back is made of glass. The frames are still plastic, but the Samsung has finally gotten rid of the teardrop notch, and we have a tiny minimalist punch hole which looks way better. But I wish I could say the same thing about the bezels, though they are still thick and look outdated. The Galaxy A35 is also slightly wider than the A34, and it's also heavier, which probably is because of the inclusion of the glass back. This time the back has a shiny finish which does catch fingerprints and smudges, but it's not that visible. So I was comfortably using this phone without a cover. Samsung has not exactly been open about what kind of glass protection they have included at the back, but you get a more robust Gorilla Glass Victus Plus for the display and as expected on an A-series phone, you also get IP67 dust and water resistance. The display side of things is impressive here too. It's a big 6.6 inches Super AMOLED display with nice colors and contrast. This screen can also go decently bright, and finally Samsung has included adaptive refresh rate support. The last year's Galaxy A34 display could only be set to either 120Hz or 60Hz. There was no adaptive refresh rate option, but that's not the case anymore, and this display can go from 60 to 120Hz depending on the content that is displayed on the screen. On the performance side, you're getting the Axonos 1380 here, which is the same chip that we saw on last year's Galaxy A54 and F54. And if you have watched my review of both these phones, you will know that initially I had complained a lot about how unoptimized it was. But over the time, Samsung did bring forth a lot of updates that optimized the chip, and its day-to-day -day performance grew to be really, really stable. The mid-range Samsung phones have always had a good reputation of having great cameras. I had the chance to test A35 cameras very extensively, and I am thoroughly impressed. You get a 50-megapixel primary camera with OIS here along with 8-megapixel auto wide-angle lens and a 5-megapixel macro lens. I did mention this at the beginning of this video too, and I will say it again. The A35 has one of the best cameras in its price segment. I am happy that there is a 4K recording option from the front camera as well quality-wise. The 4K selfie videos are not the most stable, but some object focus, and everything is nice enough from the rear camera too. You can shoot up to 4K 30fps videos. The core quality of the videos is great color reproduction, and high light management is also good. I have no complaints about the battery life on this device, either you get a 5000 mAh unit that can easily last you an entire day with a solid 7 hours of screen on time on my heavy usage pattern. Charging could be a little pain as you only get a 25 watt support that takes around 1 hour and 13 minutes to fully juice this device up. And by the way there is no charger that is included inside the box. Okay everyone so that was all for my review of the new Samsung Galaxy A35. If you're looking for a balanced Samsung option and your performance needs are not that expensive, the A35 is definitely a good option to pick. So everybody that was all for my full review of the Samsung Galaxy A35. I will also be coming up with next review very soon. So stay tuned for that. Until then I'm Ollie. And thank you so much for watching.